Hello, everyone, and welcome to Dr. Mercola's Cellular Wisdom, the podcast where we take a stroll through the corridors of your body's innate intelligence. I'm Ethan Foster, your resident observer of the human condition. Some say my humor is so dry, it's practically fossilized. And I'm Alara Sky. My job is to see how much we can learn while I crack jokes about everything from breakfast cereal to the mysteries of the hippocampus. Today's topic, walking your way to a healthier brain, courtesy of some enlightening research we've borrowed from Dr. Mercola's analysis. Folks, if you're tuning in because you like cosmic conspiracies and secret potions, I'm sorry to disappoint. We're just going to talk about walking, old-fashioned, one foot in front of the other walking, and how it might protect you from dementia. But don't leave yet, because while it sounds about as exciting as watching paint dry, apparently there's more drama happening in the brain of a brisk walker than in some real-life soap operas. Let's start with some background. Ethan, did you know that by the year 2050, the number of Americans afflicted with Alzheimer's disease could reach 12.7 million? 12.7 million. That is a lot of people trying to remember where they left their glasses, or whether they put them on in the first place. It's sobering. Currently, it's around 6 million in the U.S. alone, so in a couple of decades, that figure might more than double. And behind the scenes of Alzheimer's, we have these biochemical villains, amyloid plaques, tau tangles, and iron deposits in the brain. They're like the uninvited guests at a party who show up, refuse to leave, then start to break your furniture. I've been to a party or two like that. It wasn't pretty. And from what I've read, these plaques and tangles can do even more harm than your rowdy friends. They essentially clog up communication lines in your brain, messing with your ability to remember, think, and function. Exactly. But here's the fun twist. There's a decent amount of evidence that aerobic exercise, especially an activity as common as walking, may help keep these villains at bay. According to the research Dr. Mercola highlighted, even rats had less amyloid plaque, fewer tau tangles, and smaller amounts of iron accumulating in their little rat brains after they engaged in regular aerobic exercise. If exercise works so well for them, maybe it can do wonders for us too. The study on those rats showed a 63% drop in tau tangles, a 76% drop in amyloid plaques, and a 58% drop in iron accumulation for the athletic rodents compared to the couch potato ones. This kind of research often gives us valuable insight into how a human brain could respond. It's basically a test run on the labyrinth of our neurons. The brain is mind-bogglingly complex, and ironically, the best tool we have for defending it might be something as simple as lacing up our shoes and going outside. Or taking a brisk lap around the living room if the weather's bad. The point is that aerobic exercise, running, walking, dancing, anything that gets your heart pumping, helps preserve healthy nerve fibers. In the study, scientists saw healthier axon-myelin relationships in the brain, which is fancy talk for saying, the wiring in your brain keeps humming along better. Don't you love that phrase? Axon-myelin relationships? Like a soap opera. Will axon and myelin finally tie the knot? But in seriousness, the better those two work together, the clearer the signals in our brains. And there's more. Another study that Dr. Mercola mentions followed people for 30 years, basically from their mid-adulthood to around age 70. It found that the folks who stayed active, even if it was something modest like a bit of walking once in a while, had more robust brain volume and better cognitive resilience when they hit 70. Cognitive resilience, that's the scientific way of saying your brain can take a punch. If Alzheimer's tries to land a few jabs, you can bob and weave better if you've been physically active. Exactly. And let's be real. None of us wants to get sucker punched by memory problems. We want to remain as sharp as a newly cut diamond, even if, like me, we can't remember people's names at a dinner party. Yes, we're human, but we don't want to accelerate the forgetfulness. Another interesting tidbit from that 30-year study, they found that people who managed to be physically active, especially before 50, showed larger hippocampal volumes later on. That's the area of the brain critical for memory. It's essentially a memory warehouse. The hippocampus is the librarian's lair. If we can keep that lair organized, we might avoid that where are my keys meltdown. For me, it's more the where did I put the peanut butter meltdown. But let's just say it's all about preserving your internal filing system. Even better, the study uncovered that for women who stayed active, it offset some of the negativity associated with cortical thinning and those dreaded amyloid plaques. So if you're a woman, you really don't want to skip that walk. Actually, men neither. But apparently, women's brains are a bit more sensitive to those exercise benefits. So in a way, it's an even stronger impetus to find an activity you like and stick to it. Consistency is the name of the game. Let's talk about the simplest step, walking. I know we usually hear about intense spinning classes and savage workout regimens. But in Dr. Mercola's coverage, there's repeated emphasis on walking as a hugely beneficial, easily accessible form of aerobic exercise. Absolutely. Walking an hour a day at a brisk pace is an excellent goal. Doesn't mean you have to do it all at once. If an hour at one shot feels like a marathon to you, break it up. 20 minutes in the morning, 20 in the afternoon, 20 at night. It all adds up. That's good news for me, because one hour nonstop might put me in the witness protection program. 
I'd have to hide from the treadmill police, but split it up and it sounds doable. I'm also thinking, if you're completely new to this, start with a shorter walk and build up. Rome wasn't marched in a day, you know. Thanks, Confucius. But your point stands. If you're generally sedentary, going from zero to a six-mile power walk might not be your best plan. Small steps, pun intended, are important. Work your way up, find a way to enjoy it, and you'll keep doing it. Now let's circle back to the bigger picture. Dementia and Alzheimer's are basically the final boss in the video game of cognitive decline. They're not a guaranteed outcome of aging, but the odds get steeper if we ignore our body's pleas for movement. The fact that the number of people with Alzheimer's is set to skyrocket by 2050 is reason enough to start thinking about prevention. And I hate to break it to everyone, but prevention often looks suspiciously like common sense. Eat well, sleep, stress less, and, wait for it, exercise. Or, as the scientists in these studies phrase it, participate in consistent, moderate to vigorous activity. In my own words, get off the couch and move before your brain has a meltdown. It's a good pep talk. And while we're not prescribing a 17-point regimen, the data points to something so basic, walking. It's basically free, requires no special membership or fancy equipment, and you can do it almost anywhere. Well, maybe not on a tightrope, but you get the idea. Listen, if someone can tightrope walk for exercise, I'm impressed. And if that's you, I salute you for going above and beyond. But yeah, for most of us, a pair of comfortable shoes and some motivation is enough to start. Let's recap a bit of the hardcore science. We've got that study on older rats showing a big reduction in markers like tau tangles, amyloid plaques, and iron buildup in the brain after consistent aerobic exercise. This points to the idea that exercise physically changes the brain, possibly warding off some of the worst effects of dementia. Then there's the multi-decade human study that found regular activity across adulthood could enlarge your hippocampus and add cognitive resilience by the time you're 70. It's like building a mental cushion, so if Alzheimer's tries to strike, your brain can take more hits without you noticing major symptoms. And while we can't always control everything about our biology, it's encouraging to know that actions so basic can lead to meaningful benefits. Sometimes it feels like we need a lab full of expensive contraptions to fight diseases. Meanwhile, Dr. Mercola's coverage reminds us that your own two feet can be an integral part of the plan. Absolutely. Because your daily stroll is so much more than a stroll. It's an investment in your brain's infrastructure. Think of it as maintaining the roads, bridges, and power lines that keep the city of your mind functional. If you let them rust, you'll have traffic jams up there. If I let the roads in my head rust, I get stuck trying to remember my own phone number. Not a pleasant scenario. Okay, let's also mention that it's not just about reducing disease risk. It's also about quality of life. A functioning memory, clarity of thought, the ability to keep track of conversations. These are priceless. No one wants to feel they've lost themselves in old age. Couldn't have said it better. Speaking of which, I can't let this moment pass without giving a comedic jab to modern folks who gather steps to close those rings on their fancy devices. If that motivates you, do it. But realize that the real prize isn't a colorful ring. It's protecting your neurons. Absolutely. If a watch beep is what gets you going, then beep away. Just know that behind that beep is some serious science. The hippocampus, the myelin sheaths, even the interplay of iron in your oligodendrocytes. All these fancy terms dancing in harmony, so long as you keep moving. And yes, oligodendrocytes are indeed real cells, and not a breed of pterodactyl. They're the ones that produce the myelin insulating your nerve fibers. When that insulation deteriorates, signals misfire. Exercise seems to help keep that from happening as quickly. Which is good because we have enough misfiring signals on our own, right? I can neither confirm nor deny. So, let's talk practical. If someone is intrigued and wants to start tomorrow, what's the simplest plan? Wake up, put on your walking shoes, aim for a walk of maybe 10 or 15 minutes to start. Do it again later in the day, maybe again in the evening. It might seem small, but over time you can build up to that hour. That's a solid approach. And while you're walking, you might add a slight challenge. Pick up the pace until you feel your heart rate go up a bit. You don't need to run a marathon. Just walk briskly enough to increase your breathing. The goal is moderate intensity, not total exhaustion. In other words, if you can sing show tunes at full volume without losing your breath, maybe speed up a little, unless you're in a musical, which is a whole other scenario. Let's not even open that door. Now, once a person gets comfortable, they might realize they've become oddly protective of their walk time. It can be a meditative break from the day, or they can make phone calls, or they can simply listen to nature if they're in a place where birds exist and traffic is mercifully distant. Now, beyond walking, some people find dancing or swimming more appealing. That's fine, too. The main theme we're hammering here is Get your body moving in a way that mildly taxes your cardio system. The rest follows suit. True. We keep saying walking because it's so universal. But if dancing like you're auditioning for a 90s music video is your thing, have at it. Just don't blame me for the stares you get from your neighbors. I live to amuse the neighbors. This is also about encouraging the older generation, 
our parents, grandparents, to incorporate this daily movement, because they might say, oh, my knees are stiff, or I don't have the energy. But ironically, gentle movement is precisely what helps with that stiffness and energy deficit. It's a virtuous cycle. And consider the social aspect. Walking clubs, dancing groups, these are ways to stay active and connected. Social isolation also messes with your brain. Might as well fight the double whammy by doing something physical with friends. The takeaway from all this research is that your body was designed to move. When we keep it in motion, especially with a focus on moderate cardio, we're helping stave off the processes that lead to dementia. And that's why we're here, folks, shining a spotlight on Dr. Mercola's message. If you can walk, walk. It's more than just a way to get from A to B. It's a direct investment in the future of your mind. And that's all for today's episode of Dr. Mercola's Cellular Wisdom. I'm Ethan Foster, encouraging you to walk like your brain depends on it. And I'm Alara Skye, reminding you that those steps are precious cargo for your neurons. Thanks for joining us, everyone. Until next time, keep moving. Thanks for watching. Subscribe now and click the notification bell so you never miss an update. See you in the next video.